All right. Very next good. Up, yeah, is uh, Bob Jones of the Milton Free Water Public Library in Oregon. Uh, you can have the coolest library cards in your state for free. Take it away, Bob. Or in your country, because I see that we have people registered from Great Britain and the Philippines and Australia and New Zealand, for example. Um, yeah, you can have the coolest borrower's cards for free or very close to it. Uh, once upon a time, library cards were really blah. This is a card from our library from 60 years ago. You'll see that it expired in January of 1954. And you'll see there's no sign of any kind of mechanization, certainly not automation. It's just a piece of cardboard. Uh, ten years later, they had moved up a little bit in the world. Uh, they were using the Gaylord Model C book charging machines. So you see the little metal number plate on there. And they still had one card for all the libraries in the county. And down on the bottom, it's just rubber stamped Milton for our library. But then automation came to town. Goodbye, Gaylord Model C book charging machine. Hello, barcodes and scanners. And suddenly everything got very expensive, even library cards. Uh, so you had to search for the least expensive card you could find. In our case, our library district had to buy cards for 11 libraries and I don't know how many thousand patrons. And so they got really inexpensive cards. They were plastic. They were paper thin. and when they got old, they got kind of brittle. This is an example not from our library, but from the Pendleton Library, 30 miles down the road. And you can see that the top of the card has broken off. Um, and they didn't come with barcodes imprinted. Those were separate adhesive labels you had to paste onto the card. And in the case of Pendleton, they also pasted on a label where they had typed the patron's name. So you had to get the cheapo cheapo cards, because that's what you could afford. Well, the big libraries got really flashy cards, typical. Uh, that's where my library was in the early 90s. Um, libraries here had automated in 1990. Uh, I came in 92. And by 94, we were running out of those cheapo cards and had to get something else. So we didn't want to stay with really cheapo cards. But in 1994, through an article in Library Journal, I discovered key tags. Cedar Rapids, Iowa Public Library was using them. And I thought that sounded like a good idea. So I called them up and said, tell me about it. And at least at that time in Cedar Rapids, patron had to decide between a traditional library card or a key tag. So I contacted companies that manufacture these things and said, send me some samples. And I discovered some of the samples had advertising on them. These were sponsors who were helping to pay for the cards. Lewiston, Maine Public Library had sponsors on their cards. So I called up Lewiston. I said, how do you go about doing that? And they told me. I thought, well, we could steal both of those ideas, key tags and sponsors, to get new cards. So 19 years ago, in February of 95, we got the new cards. And they came with key tags and with a sponsor. And this is what they looked like. Um, the line drawing of the library, my wife did, uh, based on a photograph of the building. It was the Carnegie Library. And on the back side, the barcode and the sponsor, Bank of Commerce. They paid half the cost of the cards and key tags. We paid the other half. And we thought that was a pretty good deal. Now, one thing we discovered was people who hated digging through their wallet for their library card or who couldn't be bothered to even carry their library card, just loved key tags. They would whip out their key ring and say, here it is, here it is, <laughs> which was good. But there's always a downside to everything. In this case, sometimes their spouse had their car, which meant they also had their key ring and their key tag. So if they were one of those people who carried the key tag but not the card, they were still kind of out of luck. So when we started running out of those cards, we decided, well, we'll get a card with two key tags attached to it. And that way, they can have key tags on two different key rings. And they should always have one of those three pieces with them. In this case, uh, second time around, Baker Boyer Bank, which was the successor to Bank of Commerce, was still a sponsor. Bank of America was a sponsor. And our Friends of the Library Group was a sponsor. Each of them paid one-third of the cost of the cards. <coughs> Excuse me. 
excuse me. So it didn't cost the library a penny except for designing the card. We used a, a photograph of the library. We were in a new building at this time and um, just laid it out and bought the cards. Which, like I say, came with a second key tag. Another great thing about the key tags is they had the statement, if found, drop in any mailbox, return postage guaranteed. So that if you lost your keys, whether you lost them locally or across the country, if somebody threw them in a mailbox, they would come back to us, we'd scan the barcode and say, hey, we have your keys here. Uh, and at least once or twice a year, that still happens, that we get somebody's keys back from somewhere. And the post office charges us a little bit for it. And then we just charge the patron. And they're generally really happy to have their keys back. The third time around, when we bought cards, we changed it up just a little bit. Uh, we had a, a nice new picture of the library on it. Uh, new sponsor, we had a local physical therapy clinic. We had a local optometrist. And we still had um, Baker Boyer Bank. And we added a signature panel on the back. We don't require a signature from the patrons, but if everybody in your family has a, a card and mom's in charge of them all, they don't have their name on them and it's hard to figure out whose card is whose, so they can write something on there. And it doesn't have to be their name, it could just say mom, dad, you know, Susie, whatever. And just a few months ago we got our fourth generation cards and key tags and uh, once again visualize the optometrist was a sponsor, Baker Boyer Bank was a sponsor, and Friends of the Library were back as a sponsor. And we added a logo, a logo I'm sorry, for our 10 Centennial, which was the 10th anniversary of the new library building and the 100th anniversary of the Milton Public Library. Uh, still virtually free to us, all paid for by the three sponsors. This time we had the back all in white with a matte finish so they can write on the cards and the key tags easily uh, to keep it straight whose card or key tag it is. And we've been doing this for 19 years. It's worked out really well. We've actually talked some of the other libraries in Eastern Oregon into doing similar things. And it's working well for them as well. Uh, we've used a couple of different vendors for the cards because we like to see what's new and exciting. If you are fortunate enough to go to ALA or PLA, Several of the card vendors are usually in the exhibits there, and you can talk to them and uh, get ideas from them. Uh, the company we used this time was Dasher Printing out of Charlotte, North Carolina, and he was really helpful in making suggestions on how to hold down the cost of the cards and also uh, things we could do that would work better. Now, in addition to barcodes, you can also have uh, magnetic stripes, you can have those little square things, whatever they call them, that you can point your smartphone at. Anything you want on the card because it's free to you. Your sponsors are going to pay for it. And even in a small community, you have people who love your library. It may be a business. It may be a club. It may be some other group or individual in the community who would be willing to help pay for new library cards. And if it's a business, it can be a smart thing because a lot of new cards go to people who are new to town. And so they're immediately exposed to that business by seeing their name and their logo on their library card. Um, and we haven't really had trouble getting sponsors or getting sponsors to come back and sponsor an, an additional batch of cards when we started to run out. So All right, thanks, Bob. We've been getting a, a lot of comments. The sponsorship is a really uh, great uh, concept people hadn't thought of. And we have time for one question from the audience. OK, and they ask, how much do the cards cost? Okay, this last batch of cards, we bought um, 3,500 cards, and they cost about $1,800. So it was $600 for each sponsor. It depends on the qu quantities, you know. Sure. All right. Well, thank you, Bob, very much. It, you've given a lot of people some ideas here. Uh, a lot of the Twitter comments saying, hey, never thought of that. So uh, uh, cool. good, great on that. All right. So that is uh, that was our fourth uh, lightning round version uh, session. We have one left to go.